Hello everyone and thank you for joining me. Uh, today what we're going to go through is vendor prepayments. So vendor prepayments was previously a sweet app. It's now being released as part of NetSuite Data functionality, which is fantastic because what it means is that obviously we don't have any issues with upgrades and the and the sweet app doesn't have to be um, upgraded separately. So it's all part of NetSuite Native functionality. You may already have this installed in your account, but I'm going to go through obviously how to install it and then at a very high level how to use it. If you do have any um, questions, please do not hesitate to contact us um, if you need anything in further detail, or if your screens don't look the same as mine. So I'm in an administrator access, please remember that. Your screen may look different, your menu options may look different as well. First thing we're gonna go do is we're gonna go and enable the features. We're gonna go set up company, enable features. You'll notice that when I use the system, I do right tab and open up multiple tabs. I do find that easier to navigate the system. So we go on to enable features. I'm going to click on the accounting tab because um, this is one of the accounting functions. And you've got vendor prepayments. Once I tick that on, um, vendor prepayments will be activated. Now it is really important to note you will see a message pop up. It's not popping up on mine because I have previously enabled this functionality that you do have to set up vendor prepayment accounts. You've got to set that up as a, obviously a vendor prepayment is a current asset. So you've got to set that up as a current asset and then you've got to assign that to your actual um, company preferences. So I'm going to show you how to do that um, in, in a minute or so. Um, just another note, if you do decide you want to take vendor prepayments off, you need to make sure that all vendor prepayments have been deleted. Otherwise, it will not let you untick that box. Um, okay, we're going to save that feature. There we go. This is the message that I was talking about. So it did pop up. So to use this, we do have to, once we've set up the vendor prepayments account, you've got to sign it. So just a note, NetSuite does not automatically create um, those accounts as it does with some other functionality. Okay, so um, you'll now notice that that is uh, saving. So once that has saved, we can then go to a chart of accounts. So I'm going to go to a chart of accounts as a shortcut. We need to set up that, um, we obviously need to set up that account code unless you already have that. So I'm going to quickly set that up. Go to chart of accounts, new. I'm not going to pay too much attention as to where I'm setting this up. Um, one, two, okay. And we are going to call it, as I mentioned earlier, this is a uh, other current asset. Um, as we are the purchasing um, entity, we will need it as a current asset. Oh, there we go, vendor, vendor prepayments. Uh, got to love um, Google saving um, payment details with all those payment details popping up. Okay, now we have saved that as an account. Now what we want to do is we want to go into your general preferences in order to select that account. So we've enabled the feature, we've created the chart of accounts code, we now need to go into accounting preferences. I've got it on my dashboard, or you can go set up accounting um, accounting preferences. It really is up to you as to how you want to navigate to accounting preferences, but you do need to have permission in order to do that. So once we're on accounting preferences, um, you will scroll down to accounts payable. Now under accounts payable, you will see a vendor prepayment account. If you do not select this, this will not be default on your transactions. So we'll select vendor prepayments. You'll also notice that there's an auto apply vendor prepayments tick box. What that means is that if you associate a vendor prepayment with a purchase order, when you create the supplier invoice, it will automatically apply the vendor prepayment to that supplier invoice. Okay, it does it on the first come first serve basis, meaning that if you apply a vendor prepayment to a purchase order, that vendor prepayment will then be at the first one that you create against that purchase order will be applied to the supplier invoice, um, the first supplier invoice that you want to off that that gets offset. If you do not click auto apply, you need to manually apply it. Okay, so we now click save. I'm going to go and show you where you can set this up per subsidiary as well. Okay, now if you want to associate that preference with your subsidiary, you need to go to set up um, company subsidiaries. I already have that open. So if we go to set the subsidiary and you now go to the um, preferences tab, 
you'll now notice that your vendor prepayment account, because I had selected it at the um, accounting preference level, it is associated with all subsidiaries. However, I can, I can change it as well if I wanted per subsidiary. And this would also default when you select your different subsidiaries on the chart of accounts code, that is where it would default. Okay, that is setting up um, vendor prepayment. So what you'll now notice if you go to transactions, payables, and you go to enter vendor, you'll now have another menu option or another option called enter vendor prepayments, which we wouldn't have had previously. There are two ways to enter vendor prepayments. One is to enter vendor prepayments from a purchase order. So if you do it from the purchase order, it is then automatically associated with that purchase order. So when we create the bill, it will automatically be applied. As you would have seen previously, I mentioned that with that automatically apply button. Or we can create a standalone. Um, we can create a standalone pre. We are now going to enter the vendor prepayment on the purchase order. Um, I've already got a purchase order open. So what you'll notice is on the actual purchase order is a button that's called enter prepayment. So this is entering a prepayment that is associated with a purchase order. It's not entering a prepayment um, which is standalone. Um, while that, there we go. Okay, so what you'll now notice is it automatically comes up with a transaction number, a payee purchase order number, um, which was the purchase order number that we created this from. Um, we're going to be asked to choose a bank account. And we'll just go with um, a check account, the payment amount. So let's make this, um, it comes up by default with the total payment amount of what the purchase order is for. We're just going to give a $1,000 um, deposit. Um, got the exchange rate, got the currency, post and period. So most of the standard fields that we're familiar with, you can also enter department, class and location. I'm not going to enter that at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click save. Now that is not going to hit our vendor because it's a prepayment, but what it is going to do, and it's not going to hit our accounts payable ledger, I should say, but what it is going to do is it's going to create a um, journal entry. So if we go to GL Impact, Let's excuse the system. It is a demo system, which are notoriously slow. Um, actually, it has put it against uh, Cable Plus distributors, which is fantastic. So you'll now notice that we've got a, it's credited our um, bank account and it's debited vendor prepayments. Okay. Now, when we create, um, if we go back to that supplier, supplier invoice, when we create um, a bill from that supplier invoice, it is automatically going to apply um, that prepayment to that bill, or we can manually do that, okay? So you'll now notice we can still enter the prepayments because obviously it wasn't um, full of, for the full amount. To enter standalone, you could do something very similar, but you go transactions, payables, um, enter vendor prepayment. The form will look identical. The only difference to this form is you will manually be entering your um, payee, so if we select, if we go down to a drop down list, you can we'll choose the same one, cable plus distributors. Now you do have an option here to select the purchase order, and this does show the purchase orders for cable plus distributors. However, in my experience when using the screen, it does not naturally associate that with the purchase order. So I would not do this. I would only use the screen if you are creating a vendor prepayment as standalone and you do not want to apply it, um, you want to manually apply it to a bill, otherwise um, go into the purchase order and click on the enter prepayment button. So let's now, we're going to do one for 1050. Um, we're going to save this. So this is not associated with the purchase order. And what we are then going to do is we are going to on the actual vendor prepayment button, we are going to click apply. Now clicking apply will let us apply this vendor prepayment to a supplier invoice that we may have, and will then mean that we'll be paying less for that supplier invoice. So I clicked apply and has automatically come up with the open supplier invoices that I have um, for Cable Plus distributors. So just as a reminder, once this is set up, there are two ways. The first way is to go into the purchase order, enter the prepayment. The advantage of that is your prepayment is associated with the purchase order, 
when we create a supplier invoice from the purchase order, based on the first supplier invoice uh, we create, and also based on the first um, prepayment you created in that order, it will automatically apply those prepayments to the supplier invoice. You do not have to manually apply it. The second way you can do it is to go transactions, um, payables, enter vendor prepayment, and you then manually create the vendor prepayment, and you then have to manually apply it to your actual um, supplier invoice. If you do have any further questions, that is a high level overview of vendor prepayments, which really is a fantastic feature, and please let us know. I do remember the days, and some of you may remember these days, where we had to actually create journal entries um, to deal with vendor prepayments. It's fantastic that this is now being all encompassed in the NetSuite product, which just goes to show that NetSuite do listen to us, that they do enhance the product, and it's only getting better and better. Look forward to chatting to you all later.